Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to London, welcome to Chelsea, Sloan Square to be precise. It's May, so far today it's been a very typical May day. So it started off looking very much like summer, very convincingly. First thing I left the house in just a t-shirt to take care of a couple of chores and very quickly regretted it. Um, and transitioned from summer back to spring. It's now starting to look a bit like winter. Let's hope summer returns. Being May, I thought now would be a good time to talk about some of the main events that happen here in London during the month of May. And the reason I'm in Chelsea is because one of the main events is the Chelsea Flower Show. Now, at the time of me filming this, the Flower Show hasn't begun yet. It starts next week. And um, by the time you're watching this, it'll have been and gone. However, it's in a really interesting location just down the road here, the, uh, the Royal Hospital. So I thought we'd go and check out the location of the Chelsea Flower Show. Then I'll come back here to Sloan Square and uh, we'll take a look at some of the, uh, the major shopping streets here. It's one of the main reasons people come here. It's a shopping destination, very popular with ladies at lunch. And then we'll head down to Duke of York Square and I'm gonna get some lunch. First up, let's head down to um, the Royal Hospital and check out the location of the flower show. During the month of May, we're very much transitioning from spring to summer. So as you'll see today, the weather is highly unpredictable and not just day to day, but hour to hour. However, the weather is improving. So that means more outdoor events. There's open air theater. The London Symphony Orchestra hold a free concert each year in Trafalgar Square, which is remarkable. We have the Underbelly Festival on the South Bank, which is a mix of comedy circus and cabaret and the Royal Horticultural Society show here in Chelsea. It's the biggest event of this month and for British horticulturists, the most prestigious of the year. Okay, we've gone for all the seasons in one day. Today, it started off as summer, um, then spring, and now it's raining. Winter's here. Um, this here is the Royal Hospital, the corner of it. It's quite a big site. Um, this is Royal Hospital Road. Um, if you head down there to those traffic lights there, that's um, the Chelsea embankment runs along there, the River Thames is there, the bridge over the River Thames right there. Um, there is a spectacular entrance on the front um, to the Royal Hospital, a long sweeping driveway. Um, I think the most used entrance is here, it's quite a long walk across there. This road intersects the, the hospital building, the main buildings and their sports ground. Um, and then beyond the sports ground is um, the Saatchi Gallery, which we'll head to in a little while, which was originally a um, military school um, and training grounds. So pretty much the military would have had um, from the river to the King's Road. Um, you know, head down here, we'll check out the, uh, the main buildings, get quite a close view here um, on this road um, of the main buildings opposite the sports ground and then I'll head back up to Sloan Square. The southern grounds as well. The other side of the building is where the flower show is. It really dominates that whole section of the building's ground. Ticket prices and hospitality offers for the flower show vary from the reasonable to the absurd. So the sooner you book, the better, and it's usually a sell out show each year. So if you do wish to visit, book tickets as early as possible. However, even if you don't have tickets to the show, during the show, Chelsea holds a Chelsea and Bloom competition in which many of the local stores, hotels, and restaurants take part in, and they compete in. So they go about it in a serious way. There are some phenomenal floral displays on the streets of Chelsea. The bars and hotels offer show inspired menus and drinks, so it's great time to visit Chelsea. Okay, as you can see, preparations there for the flower show. It's actually sunny and raining. The story of the Royal Hospital here in Chelsea began over 300 years ago, first opening in 1692 during the reign of King Charles II, whose vision for a home for veteran soldiers was designed and built by Sir Christopher Wren. But it's not just the buildings that have survived to this day. King Charles II believed the country owes a debt of gratitude to its old soldiers, and that is the spirit of the Royal Hospital today. It's an institution inspired by the French and their equivalent, Les Invalides in Paris, which opened in the 1670s. Just opposite the uh, 
the Royal Hospital buildings themselves. And they're sports grounds, they always look really, uh, really good. Members only. Okay, you get a good, good view of the main buildings here. The residents of the Royal Hospital, known affectionately as Chelsea Pensioners, have all served as ordinary soldiers in the armed forces at some point in their lives, and now in their later years find a warm welcome amidst the camaraderie and banter of their fellow veterans. You will often see them in Chelsea wearing the iconic scarlet red coats of their uniforms. Okay, well the trucks are arriving for the Falcon. Right, let's head back to um, Sloan Square. Stop raining now. Unpredictable weather. The Royal Hospital here provides a home and a community for veterans, and they then in turn support the wider community as part of the Royal Hospital's outreach programme, helping the elderly, the vulnerable, and the homeless, among the many other projects they're involved in. The architecture of the Royal Hospital was amazing. It's definitely worth coming and checking out if you're in Chelsea, both this side and the riverfront southern grounds when they're not obscured by the flower show. Okay, the rain's getting a bit more serious now. It calls for an umbrella. Okay, that's better. Um, I get asked quite a lot what people should uh, pack what people should wear at various times of the year here for a, for a trip to London and um, you often tell people the weather's unpredictable they think you're being unhelpful but what do you pack and what do you wear when it's warm and sunny and raining who knows this area of London, Kensington and Chelsea is a very nice part of town and for many a very desirable place to live to the extent it's one of the most densely populated parts of the entire United Kingdom. I bet estate agents don't mention that when you're viewing properties here. We are just west of the centre of London. You can very easily walk to the centre of town. The area's got great transport links, amazing parks nearby and plenty of good restaurants, bars and globally renowned shops including Harrods just a short walk away. Okay, today Chelsea is very much a shopping destination. There are a lot of residential properties in the back streets here, more so than some other parts of London, so it's a very popular place to live, but it's also a popular place for visitors. And Sloan Square is very much at the heart of that. You've got a hotel, theatre, restaurants and bars, a department store there, Peter Jones. Um, the start of the King's Road is here, um, a renowned shopping street, and there is Sloan Street which runs from here to Kensington, lined with luxury boutique shops, very popular with shoppers, and there's little enclaves of boutique shops in many of the back streets, restaurants, cafes, bars. Um, I'm going to head over to... Duke of York Square which is just here and uh, there's a market there on Saturdays, it's a Saturday today, hopefully get some lunch. Um, let's head around the back of Peter Jones. The Peter Jones department store is named after its original founder who opened his first store in a different part of London and moved here in 1877. He was so successful he took over this whole block and the current store was built between 1936 and 1938. However after a period of troubled trading the store was sold to competitor John Lewis who had a department store on Oxford Street whose son founded the John Lewis Partnership who still own and operate the business today. Okay if you head up Sloan Street from um, Sloan Square or up here, uh, Pavilion Road is that? Pavilion Road. Um, comes out to Knightsbridge, comes out to the uh, the back of Harrods um, which is very similar to Peter Jones in the and I guess that although the front is the most 
I guess, well-known entrance, especially with Harrods, because it's lit up with fairy lights. Um, the grander looking entrance is actually at the back, in terms of where the main roads are. It's actually uh, quite a nice walk from here to Harrods. This is film, so I can very quickly show you. One of the very many reasons this is a popular area to live is even some of the smaller properties, the Muse houses, have off-street parking. And we can see quite a few of those just around the corner here on the way to Harrods. Off-street parking can be rare in other parts of London and considering our close proximity here to the centre of London, you can drive out of town to the country relatively easily. You can on a good day get to the M40 motorway pretty quickly and that heads up to the Midlands and the M25 is an easy drive outside of peak times which as it encircles the whole of London is more often than not part of any drive out of town. But as much as I enjoy driving, as a form of transport in central London, it's the most frustrating way to get nowhere fast. Okay, welcome to Harrods. Quite a few news crews there. If you're following current affairs, that's the Ecuadorian embassy. This is Harrods. Harrods is Europe's largest department store and arguably the most famous store in the world. It's on a five acre site with around a million square foot of selling space. The store's motto translated from Latin means all things to all people everywhere. However, today it's primarily synonymous with luxury goods. A bit like Peter Jones, I think the building actually looks slightly more impressive. Maybe yeah. impressive is the wrong word. But uh, yeah. slightly nicer from the back. The other side's a lot bigger, especially when it's lit up at night. It does look a lot more impressive on the other side, but yeah, it's quite nice, this entrance. Got a little cafe outside here as well, that array, uh, famous for their macarons. It's raining hard now. Right, back to Chelsea for lunch and hopefully some more summer. Okay, it's British equivalent of a uh, GoPro. Has its limitations. Compact camera and umbrella. That's better.
okay, all these little shops here. Um, often overlooked. Um, Peter Jones there. These stores are actually relatively new, although some of the businesses in them are very well established here in London, but we have a wine merchants, a cheesemongers, and an artisan bakers all in a row. What more could you want? Okay, would you believe it? The, uh, the sun is shining once again. Summer's back just in time for lunch. So I'm gonna head to a market just on the other side of uh, the Peter Jones department store here in um, Duke of York Square. Square is just there, back where we began. Um, there is an entrance to Duke of York Square just there. But I'll head further along the King's Road here and um, we'll get a better view of the market from across the road here and the Sanchi Art Gallery. <laughs> This is the very start of the King's Road. It runs for about two miles through Chelsea. The street was originally the King's Road. It was a private road for the royal family, linking their palaces here in central London to their palaces in Kew. They stopped using the palaces in Kew, so the street was open to the public in 1830. It really shot to fame in the 1960s as part of the swinging 60s here in London, along with streets like Carnaby Street. It was a place for the young and fashionable to be seen and to buy fashion. There are a lot of famous fashion stores here back then. It managed to reinvent itself from hippies to punk in the 1970s, but then in the 1980s and the 1990s became little more than Chelsea's High Street. Although it's back in business again, selling fashion to the young, it's a popular place for people to come and not only buy fashion, but enjoy food and drink in the many restaurants and bars. smell the food from across the road, it smells phenomenal. Check it out. Pretty busy as well considering it's just stopped raining. The open square opposite us is the main square of Duke of York Square which is today a retail complex here at the end of the King's Road. For just over 200 years it was home to the military. The main building opened in 1801 and the military left in 2003 when it was converted into what we have today which is shops, bars, restaurants and an amazing art gallery, a modern art gallery. And every Saturday there's this farmer's market. Okay, before I dive straight into the market there, um, just next to the Saatchi Art Gallery here are the main shopping squares I guess of Duke of York Square um, which we've just walked along the front of the exterior shops. But, uh, yeah, Saatchi Art Gallery is in here. And that is the main part of Duke of York Square. So boutique size um, shops, a few restaurants as well. But I'm gonna to head to um, one of the, I usually get the same thing to be honest when I come here. Um, duck confit sandwiches from uh, Partridges. Partridges is a uh, food store. It's a food shop on the edge of this square. Um, and they have a market stall outside. Um, yeah, like I said, I usually get the same thing. Failing, um, they've run out, sold out, or aren't there today. The fine food market is open here in Duke of York Square each Saturday from around 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's a curated market, so there's a phenomenal mix of street food to enjoy while you're here and some incredible produce to take home with you.
great success. Partridge, Partridge's food stores there, and um, their market store is here. I say success, I can't see any duck cooking. Duck's back. Okay, success. Duck confit sandwich from Partridge's Market Store. One of the few markets in London where you can get table service and uh, they serve bottles of champagne. I'll make do um, street stuff. Go and find somewhere to sit and eat this. It's a bit early for the champagne. All the seats to take, be on the deck. Um, I hope to be a little bit quiet, as it's just rained. So yeah, lunch on the King's Road in Chelsea. Literally on the road. Okay, loads of duck. Let's give this a go. I know they're good, that's why I go back time and time again. I got um, plum sauce, I got a choice of about six different sauces. I went for plum sauce, cuts through the duck nicely, duck and uh, two types of salad. Definitely recommend. What? Definitely recommend a trip to the market. I definitely recommend uh, partridges, duck, sandwiches. With plum sauce is a good combo. Chinese style. Um, I've had a fair few of these in my time. Right, I'm going to tuck into this. I'm going to have another quick look around the market. Okay, that duck confit sandwich was phenomenal. I definitely recommend a trip here to this market um, and the duck confit sandwich. I'm gonna head back in, try and find a coffee to try and induce me from this food coma. It's, that duck confit sandwich has put me in. Um, despite some of the, um, I guess, pretentious Chelsea touches, you'll see the bottles of champagne and uh, the ladies that look like they have had an allergic reaction to something they've eaten. Don't worry, it's just Botox, they pay to look like that. Um, it is actually, by London standards, pretty, uh, I wouldn't say good value for money, but competitive. Um, street food these days is uh, not always the best value food for money, but uh, it is amazing. Right, hope you enjoyed this trip to Chelsea. Until next time, toodles.